Eccoci qua. Questa volta per And here we are. This time to talk about a truly extraordinary character. A famous star who was loved all around the world. And he is, undoubtedly, in the hearts of the inhabitants of Castellaneta. We are talking about Rudolf Valentino, the international superstar of silent films, to whom this monument is dedicated. In 1961, a visionary, far-sighted and industrious local administrator finally managed to have it built, commissioning the work to the master sculptor Luigi Gheno, a Venetian by birth but Roman by adoption, in collaboration with the local architect Nicola Cantone. The sculptor Luigi Gheno created a functional work of art to commemorate the qualities of the actor. It's not a theatrical monument, but it gives the idea of the actor on stage, between the side scenes that define the space. On the leading side scene, a bas relief which celebrates the allegory of the cinema with its technical devices, such as cameras, lights, as well as the theatre audience and technical assistance. And all three scenes form a backdrop to the ceramic statue of the star in the role of the Sheikh's son, his last film. This statue is portrayed as an idealistic, dreamlike representation, enhanced by the glossy cobalt blue patina, which has also been used on the face. It conveys the idea of the movie star, a man who crowds grew to love through the screen characters that he played, however ephemeral they were. This is the way to give the right importance to a fellow citizen, who had incredible vitality and initiative, qualities with which he dominated the screen world, which was still in its infancy. His father, Dr. Giovanni Guglielmi, a veterinary surgeon born in Martina Franca, had come to work in Castellaneta in 1881, and there he remained for 24 years, employed as a municipal veterinarian. His job also included providing medical assistance and support to cattle scattered in the various farms in the countryside of Castellaneta. And it was in one of these very farms that he met Miss Gabrielle Barbin, who at the time was the lady companion of the Marchioness Giovinazzi. This was the San Mama farm, which was the most important among those owned by the Giovinazzi family. On June 22, 1889, Dr. Giovanni Guglielmi was united in marriage with Miss Gabrielle Barbin, 33 years old, born in Lure in France and resident in Taranto. They came to live in this house in Via Roma, which was then called Via del Commercio, and from their marriage were born four children. Grazia Beatrice, commonly known as Bice, then Alberto, Rodolfo, and last of all, Maria. The eldest daughter, Grazia Beatrice, known as Bice, died prematurely at the age of 14 months, leaving her parents absolutely grief-stricken. It was August the 14th, 1891, and her body was buried in the new cemetery in Castellaneta, a cemetery which had not yet been inaugurated. A simple tomb with a stone slab with the essential biographical data engraved on it is what we have of Bice's memory. As a sign of their grief, her parents added two lines of verse, each one in their own mother tongue. On one side there is the line, he who dies young is dear to heaven, 
a verse by Giacomo Leopardi taken from the Greek Menander, and on the other side, in French, a verse by the poet François de Malherbe, which states, like a rose she lived, only the span of a morning. With the birth of the last-born Maria, the house in Via Roma became insufficient, and so Giovanni looked for a larger one. He found what he was looking for in the building of a sagacious farmer, a certain Francesco Rocchira. The farmer had bought the entire block at number 28 Via Regina Margherita, a building located in a developing area of the town. The house was equipped on the ground floor with several rooms and amenities and even had a rear garden which was much loved by Gabrielle and her children. Rodolfo's education was a rather complex matter. It began here in Castellaneta and was completed in Sant'Ilario Ligure in Genoa. Rodolfo attended the first two years of primary school at a private religious school run by the sisters Maria Ausilia and Concettina Perrone, which was exactly what his parents had in mind. Then he attended an all-boys third-year class in the year 1901-1902, where he was enrolled in advance, as he was only six years old. The all-boys third-year class was entrusted to the teacher Nicola Dalagni, a great educator, admired not only for his dedication to school, but also for his many cultural interests. But above all, he was bound by feelings of friendship and respect to Rodolfo's father, Giovanni. It turned out to be a demanding school year that ended successfully with Rodolfo obtaining very good marks, which were accompanied by the following comment by Dalagni, his teacher. An exquisite moral education coupled with an uncommon intelligence and goodwill. He attended the fourth year class in the scholastic year 1902-1903 with the teacher Francesco Miraglia in a class of 28 pupils. Here too he was promoted with excellent marks receiving the following evaluation. For his age he should still be in a second year class. He has therefore achieved a great deal in this class and despite his slight unwillingness to study he is intelligent. In his final year of primary school in Castellaneta, we are in the scholastic year 1903-1904, he was in a small class of only 19 pupils with the teacher Antonio Bardinella, an old and much respected teacher with years of experience, but on probably less friendly terms with Dr Giovanni. In fact, the teacher noted some shortcomings in the boy's preparation, but in the end, Rodolfo was promoted with the overall marks of six for conduct and six for attainment. Dr Giovanni Guglielmi, as well as being a vet, was also a scientific researcher. During his work, a conviction had matured inside him that malaria could be transmitted from animals to humans. And in an attempt to verify this belief, 
he had asked to be transferred to Taranto, where he could use the recently opened laboratory of hygiene and prophylaxis to prove his theory. In the autumn of 1904, pending the transfer, he enrolled his son Rodolfo, who was starting a new course of study in a boarding school, the Dante Alighieri School, which specialized in technical studies. For the first time, Rodolfo found himself far away from the security of his family, and especially from his mother, to whom he was very much attached. This distress would eventually turn out to have a negative influence on his growth. The following year, however, Rodolfo was enrolled again in the first class and passed the year successfully. Unfortunately, the family, which had only moved to Taranto in the summer of 1905, was to be struck by tragedy with the unexpected death of Giovanni on March 24, 1906. The first consequence of the untimely death of Dr. Giovanni Guglielmi was that the family had to leave the elegant apartment in Via d'Aquino No. 73 and move to a more modest and peripheral flat in Via Massari No. 12. Here, Mrs. Barbin lived with her children for over 10 years. And the curious fact today is that the name of the pizzeria that now occupies the premises where she lived still bears her surname. Barba. A second consequence was that Rodolfo was sent to study in a boarding school for orphans of health personnel in Perugia. It was his mother, Gabrielle, who accompanied him there in the autumn of 1906. However, this new arrangement was not to Rodolfo's liking, as he did not like the environment and, above all, the strict military-like organization, which even included a school uniform. Rodolfo did not behave well, and after a couple of years, he was expelled. He returned to Taranto, where he manifested an interest in joining the Italian Navy, and then went to Venice to take the entry exams. The general knowledge tests went well. What did not go well, however, were the medical tests, for which he was dismissed for thoracic insufficiency. Following this disappointment, the family decided to send him to study at a technical and agricultural school in Sant'Ilario di Nervi, near Genoa, where by law some places were reserved for orphans. Once again it was down to Mother Gabrielle to accompany her son Rodolfo. It was the autumn of 1910 and Rodolfo was 15 years old. This time, however, Rodolfo understood that his own future depended entirely on his commitment. He studied hard and received good marks as if he was the first in the class and obtained a school diploma as an expert in agrarian studies or what today we would call an agricultural expert. In 1913, he spent his last summer in Taranto as shortly after he decided to leave Italy to seek his fortune in the USA, where he arrived on December the 23rd, 1913. Where the drifts are